Hey guys, for those of you who don't know, my name is Shannon. That wasn't what I was going to tell you. For those of you who don't know and haven't been to my website, um, I'm moving from North Texas to the opposite end of Texas where I grew up, back down to South Texas and South Padre Island. Um, I'll be moving down there next week, so things are very intense as far as uh, preparations. Um, one thing I can tell you when you're getting ready with your gear to go to salt is everything matters. And what I mean by that is salt will expose you and hypersaline salt water in lower Laguna Madre will kill you if you let it. So here's the deal. You, I'm going from a situation where I go to salt occasionally six times seven times a year to where I'm going to be living on salt and it's not only salt like I said it's hypersaline it's some of the saltiest water in the world and so you got to have your stuff in order and one of the things I needed to do for a long time finally getting around to it is actually changing out the hubs on my boat trailer god I know I know it's boring I know it's boring and I know that um, you'd rather be doing other things, but hubs are a weak point in a boat trailer. And there's plenty of uh, opinions on which ones are the best. Um, what I can say is that I wanted, uh, from the beginning, uh, when I first got this brand new trailer in Florida, before I even got it home, it spun off the caps off the, off the hubs. So the, the caps were spun off because if you can imagine in an assembly, it's not even an assembly line, but where they assemble trailers, they've got a pallet of tires, a pallet of axles, and they got, uh, you know, another pallet of um, hubs or whatever. And so they just slap all that stuff together underneath there, put it together, and out it goes. Well, in that situation, what happens? Well, the tires were never balanced. The rims were never balanced, so there's vibration from when I left micro vibration that spun off the, the caps and so it kind of sucks man because that's there's two points where water can get into your hub the front and the back well if the front's wide open and you're driving through a rainstorm like i was yeah yeah they, they were breached immediately so got home and uh got to work on trying to figure out how to get just to get new caps on the hub was a stupid hassle because on the on the spindle where the uh, where the uh, hub mounts, the actual zerk fitting on the end was too long, and it would hit on the metal cap. So, as you'll see in the video, on one side where I could where I had to do this, I put in one of those like serviceable caps where it's got a little rubber thing on the outside. Of course, it degrades. Water gets in. You can even see water coming out in the, in the video when I actually pull that hub. So that sucked. It had water in it. It was breached. On the other side, I managed somehow, I don't know how, to make one of these caps, these metal caps fit. And uh, I must have hammered it to death to get it to fit. But anyway, that's that. Um, and now I'm replacing them. And what I'm replacing them with is these. I, you got so many choices. This is the, this is a, Dexter owns this company now, but these are Vortex. So this is a Vortex uh, hub replacement galvanized so it's salt water worthy in that respect and then of course it's got the the uh, double seal double lip seal on the inside and then um, a screw on cap on the front let me show you this because it's like the the heart of the matter is those caps are the biggest pain when they disappear on the road somewhere well if you've got this this guy and they come pre-charged with grease and everything so it's good good grease on here and let me just find and show you if i can what am I, i'm just making a train wreck out of this already <laughs> let me show you the cap that goes on this baby because this is where it's at the cap is the problem the cap is the problem do i have oh, there we go now this company Vortex uh, used to be called something else, uh, Tie Down or some, something like that. Bought out by Dexter, Dexter's buying everybody out, that's the way it goes. So here's the cap, threaded, threaded plastic. You can buy, I think you can find threaded metal, 
But here's the mistake people make. I saw in a video already that a guy did. He puts on this threaded plastic. Then he goes and gets a pipe wrench. It freaking tightens the thing down to where it smashes. There's an O-ring right there to where it smashes the O-ring. The plastic. Hand tighten it and then some by hand. And then leave it. And it, that, let that rubber, I mean that uh, O-ring, well, it's not even rubber, it's a composite. It's something that is uh, resistant to, uh, to grease. That's not rubber. Um, I just noticed. Let it do its work. And your front side sealed, your seal on the back. Okay, isn't that great? So you got it. Uh, it comes with lug nuts, this cap, which is the coup de gras. And the hub, that's all you get, people. That's all you get. So you have to salvage your retaining. See, here's the old one right here. Ugh, nasty. You have to salvage from the front that washer, that retaining, big fat retaining washer and the nut that goes on there. And you want to salvage your cotter pin too. I use stainless steel cotter pins and I've discovered now there must be a, a supply chain problem. They're hard to find. <clears throat> but let me tell you something. The tools you need are pretty simple, of course, to get off, you know, you know how to get off a of tire and all that and and unloose the cotter pin and then take off the, everything. That's that's simple enough. But <clears throat> once you get everything off, you clean it off. Do what you gotta do. If the spindle looks bad, replace it. Just do yourself a favor and replace the darn thing, will you? I mean, come on. And I know I'm forgetting something already. It's, this is really not that involved. It's pretty freaking simple. I've done this a million times on land, Toyota Land Cruiser, so it's a lot more complicated. But, and different, but a lot more complicated. Um, this is what you need, anti-seize lubricant. This is a lifetime supply. I've had this 20 years, 25 years. Uh, for your lug nuts, you're going to salt. The bolts, the lug, the lug bolts are not galvanized. So you have to go in there with the uh, anti-seize or grease or whatever you want to use, anything to keep them from seizing up. You could charge a little more of the uh, Lucas uh, Marine grease in there if you wanted to. Look where the Zerk fitting is on these. Isn't that great? It's right there. That's pretty fantastic, people. That's a game changer. No need to ever open it up to grease it. You just pump some. You can take the cap off and pump some until you see the grease coming out the front. You know, you, you know you're there, and then that, and then that'll force any moisture out. You just wipe that out with a paper towel, and you're good to go. But they claim you don't have to ever service them for like 100,000 miles, 100,000 miles, 100,000 miles, 100,000 miles. Fantastic, I'm telling you. So another thing you got to do when you got to put these guys back on, I'm sure I'm leaving something out. I know it. I know it. Oh, here's the thing. Okay, so the depth, this area in here is a little bit different. It's a little thicker, a little wider. It's going to send that washer and that, that retaining screw, a crazy looking screw. I don't have one here. I don't know where it is. It's back in front or whatever. Um, it's going to send it a little further out on the spindle. Well, when it comes out on the spindle, just, uh, just a hair if it comes out, then you have trouble getting that cotter pin back in there. So you're going to have to go to a thinner cotter pin to go in there. Super thin. But when you think about it, once you've got it tightened down and set right, there's not a lot of stress on that. It's just like a safety thing. Don't leave it off. You cannot leave it off. But um, a thinner cotter pin or you know whatever you got to do to get one in there, you have to have one. Um, but there might be clearance issues with getting that pin to go in the hole that crosses through the spindle and then you bend those edges out of the cotter pin. So that's that. Last, I think it's last. I mean, this is, this, this is easy, man. This is easy stuff. But it's important. It's so important when you go to salt and you live on salt. I mean, if I had these before, I, my life would be so much more relaxing because I drive hundreds of miles on the old spindles to salt, get them salty, drive back, and then service them. You know what I mean? I service them before I go, but 
this is it. A hundred thousand miles is their claim. I'm just saying. The last thing you want to do, people. Torque wrench. Torque, baby. Give it the torque. If you don't have a torque wrench to torque your lug nuts down, how do you know? Part of what I do when I prepare, or when I get these things ready to go, is I want to be ready for them to break. I want them not to break. I, I, I take care of them to the point where they won't break, hopefully. But if they do break, number one is I know how to fix it, and number two is I probably know what broke. So think about that for a minute. You know, the more work you can do yourself, people, um, hopefully, the more you'll know about what what goes wrong because I'm gonna who knows I may drive 100,000 miles before this is over. I'm moving from Benton, Texas to South Padre Island, Texas. That's 563 right there, give or take two, and uh, so it's gonna be quite a journey. And I'm sure I'll bring bring my boat back for a carp season next year in May, April, May, June, uh, to hit the carp season up here. So guys, take care of your stuff, get ready for salt. If you're living on salt, this is de facto. Try out these Vortex hubs. I guess you could say they're by Dexter now uh, because Dexter bought them out. So whatever, Dexter buys everybody out. Don't, don't let that turn you off. But there they are. This is the way they come. And this is a coup right here. This is cool. Cool and coup right here. Zerk fitting right there. Very good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I got more videos I'm gonna rack up because um, it's gonna be hit the ground running when I get to South Padre Island. You know I'll be opening the store in Port Isabel right across the causeway at Los Pescadores. That place is located in the shadow of the historic lighthouse in downtown Port Isabel. So come check me out. You can come see me before I'm even open. Just hit me with a text. Here's my number along the bottom here, my phone number. I've got two, three phone numbers now coming. And so you can hit me on any of those, hook up with you guys and uh, talk fish, talk boat trailers. Boat trailers? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great um, fall. Cheers to you. Get you a good Oktoberfest and uh, enjoy the uh, October fly fishing on the Texas Gulf Coast with me, coming up soon.